Hey, First Baptist Church, Happy New Year. It's 2022. I am Chris for First News. Hey, we got some great things coming up to start the new year. January 5th, Wednesday night, we start off our Wednesday night schedule again. We've got our meal, we've got discipleship classes, activities for our children, activities for our students. Hey, you don't want to miss out. First Baptist Church will be the place for families on Wednesday night. Now you may think, how do I know what's going on? I'm glad you asked. You should have got a bulletin when you came in. Turn that over. There's a schedule on the back. It'll tell you the meal time, tell you what classes are being offered, who's teaching them, when the children's activities, when our student activities are. And so, hey, we hope to see you on Wednesday night, January the 5th. Also, this coming Saturday, January the 8th, Upward Basketball starts. I can't wait. We've got over 280 kids playing this year, but we're going to need some help. We've got coaches already. They've been practicing. We need some referees for games. We need help at the snack bar in the afternoons. And so, hey, if you can help, stop by the table, come talk to me. I'd love to get you registered to referee at two or three games each Saturday. Hey, we, we give our referees free lunch. So, hey, there's that. So come stop by. If you can help in the snack bar to sign up for one of those shifts, hey, we'd love to have you. Come find me. I'll be at a table by the elevators to get signed up for that. Speaking of Upward Basketball, we have a special guest today to do the welcome. I would even call him probably Upward Coach of the, well, maybe Upward Coach of the Year is a stretch. So let's go with Upward Coach of the Day to do our welcome, Micah Roddy. Come on, Micah. You're such a dork. Well, good morning, church family. I am so excited to be here with you today. Uh, and I guess I am the upward coach of the day for something. Uh, oh, yeah. I've got to stop leaving that guy alone. He has way too much time on his hands. Uh, he is leading us this morning as uh, preaching, as Pastor Brian is out on vacation. So we'll get to hear the wonderful word that God has given Chris today. Uh, if you are visiting with us today or it's your first time in a long time, we'd like to say welcome home. If you wouldn't mind, look at the pew in front of you. There is a yellow piece of paper just like this. If you wouldn't mind, grab that and fill that out. And a little bit later when the offering comes by, if you wouldn't mind just dropping that in the plate for us. Uh, and for everyone else, I would like to say welcome. You have officially been to church every single Sunday of 2022. So way to go. Hey, again, we are so excited to have you all here today. Let's pray, and then we'll worship our risen King. Heavenly Father God, you are wonderful. And we thank you for this opportunity for us to come together, um, even when it is windy outside, even when it is unnaturally cold outside for South Texas, you are still in control, and we can still come together and worship you, Lord. We're so thankful for that. Please be with all of our family who is still out traveling over the holidays, and be with them as they come home, and help them get home safely. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. Please prepare our hearts to meet with you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's worship.
very glad that you've come to worship this morning. Stand with us as we sing joyfully to the Lord. Joyful, joyful, we 
Sing with us this morning. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more, stronger than darkness, new every morn, our sins they are many, His mercy is more. Stand with us as we sing about the Lord, our salvation. The grace of God has reached for me and pulled me from the raging sea, and I am saved. On this solid ground, the Lord is my salvation. I will not fear when darkness falls. His strength will help me scale these walls. I'll see the dawn.
Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we welcome this new year, as we reflect back on last year, set goals and resolutions for this year, let us include you in those plans. You've been so gracious to us with our gifts, with your mercy, with your grace. Help us to return that in these tithes and offerings, and that you'd bless them to the ministry of this church. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Lord Jesus, in your presence. 
Lord, we do give you all the glory. Lord, we thank you for a time that we can come before you and worship as a family. Lord, we thank you for a chance that we have just to hear from you today, Lord. And uh, Lord, selfishly, I pray to move me out of the way. Don't let me get in your way today. Lord, we thank you for all that you do, Lord. And as we get ready to celebrate a new year, that you will be a huge part of that. And that we do give you the glory. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, happy new year. Hope, oh man, I forgot. This will come up later, so don't mind me throwing my keys there. So don't take those, Bill Bevel. So um, hope that you had a good new year. Hope you didn't have to stay up as late as I did with my dog, because, I mean, we don't, we live in a firework-free city, so that's good. So that was nice. But anyway, so somewhere New Year's went a little longer for me than others. So, um, so my question is, we talk about it. We always, how many of you made your New Year resolutions already? Have you made them? Yeah, Johnny's looking at me like, no. The better question is, how many of you have already broken the one that you made a day ago? Yes, that's right. I was thinking about this going in. We always talk about the New Year resolutions or did you make your resolutions did you make, as Stephen said in his prayer, did you make goals for the new year or right now? How come it's always at the beginning of the new year that we do that? You know, after we do an event here around church, we usually evaluate and sit down and go, what can we do to make it better next year? Or what went really good on paper but went sideways when we executed it? And it got me thinking, why don't we ever hear of resolutions like in June or July? I mean, we're halfway through the year, and let's be honest, we probably need to reassess and go, yeah, that didn't go as well as I thought, you know? Brian made the point last week that if you're a member of a gym, for the next two to three months, it's going to be really full, and by March, you'll be able to get in in no time, and there'll be nobody there again, right? Because we always say we're going to exercise and all of that. In fact, I have a list of the most common resolutions, the top 10 lists. Are you ready? So, if you haven't made your resolutions, get ready to write all these down, and here we go. Number one, exercise more. We'll come back to that one in a minute. Number two, lose weight. Number three, get organized. Number four, live a new, learn a new skill or hobby. Number five, live life to the fullest. Number six, save more money or spend less money. Number seven, quit smoking. Number eight, spend more time with family and friends. Number nine, travel more. And number 10, read more. So there's your top 10 list. Now, we say exercise more. I admit I was going to exercise more. I had every intention to go start running because about two months ago, I get a phone call from Micah. And he says, if you see Stephen and Jolie, run away from them. And he goes, wait, don't run away, just avoid them. And I'm like, what is going on? Because I'm over in the rec center. There's no telling what's happened in this building most part of the day. So I come walking over, and I'm greeted by Stephen and Jolie. And Stephen says, hey, we're going to run Beach to Bay. We need somebody. Do you want to run Beach to Bay? And I think Micah thought I would say no. And I said, sure, as long as I get to run leg three, the bridge. And he said, congratulations, you're leg three which I turned around and then looked at Micah, and he looked at me like, dude, the plan failed. What are you doing? But this is where you guys need to pray for Stephen, because he's a little delusional. One, he continues to ask me if I started training, and I told him I'm mentally preparing to get ready for this. Okay? But number two, he thinks we're going to win in our age division or whatever. And I'm not going to say Micah's fault, but yeah, no. No. So I keep telling him, we're not going to win. We're just going to finish. And we're going to get a medal, and I'm going to wear that participation medal as proud as I can. So just know, if we have somehow accidentally win or get first through third, we're going to have a party on that Sunday afterwards, okay? But he thinks we're going to win. But that's one of my goals. So yesterday I got up and thought, I'm going to go run. And then I realized, it's 90 degrees outside. I'm not going to run. Which everybody wants to know why you get sick in Corpus. It was 94 degrees yesterday, and when I woke up this morning, it was 44 degrees. Yeah, welcome to South Texas. But we set these goals, we get ready, and really the main question that I have is this. 
our resolutions, and as we look into the new year, should be, what is going to be different from last year to this year? Johnny showed the video and says, God's inviting you. What if God invited you to do something trans- to be transformed? And he has. We just have to realize that and say, these are the things that I did last year that I need to quit doing. Or here's the things that I really need to do and spend more time with you. Or here's what we're going to do. And so I really want to look at it and say, as I said in the sermon title here, New Year, now what? Because I feel like we make resolutions because one, it makes us feel better about a new year. And these are the things that I need to improve. And we may share that with a few people and go, I want you to help me become accountable. And then when people question us and we, they feel like they're holding us accountable, we get upset because we feel like they're calling us out. But really, it comes down to going, what is going to be different from 2021 to 2022? Maybe I started last year and said, I'm going to spend more time in God's Word. And you got to June, and you're like, man, I really messed that up. But I will start over next year. No. If you mess that up, start over whenever that is. Just like me. I missed a day of running. Stephen already gave permission I don't have to go run today because he said today's a perfect day to go running. The weather is great, except for the wind. And I said, I agree. So I'm going to stay inside today. (laughs) Thanks, Stephen. Appreciate you. So, but we can start over. We don't have to wait till the beginning of the new year. And so as I say, new year, now what? All right? We're going to start out in Acts 22, verses 14 and 15. So if you've got your Bible, start turning to Acts 22. If you're looking for it in the bulletin, it has the Pew Bible number. If you have the Bible just like me, it's on page 930. Let me explain as you're turning there to what Acts 22 is. Basically, as we get into Acts 22, we see this as Paul. Paul is being arrested. He's being sent basically to prison. And as he gets ready to go, he says, wait a minute. Can I share with all the people around? And so the commander stops and begins to think about it and basically says, okay, Paul, you can share. And so Paul calls all the people together. They all gather, as it says, on the steps. And basically, Paul shares his testimony of what has happened in his life in Acts 22, which I thought was very interesting. Because, let's be honest, if we were all being arrested or done something wrong or getting ready to hell head to jail or to prison, probably the last thing I would be thinking about was, I need to share my testimony with all these people. Our natural response is defend ourselves and go, wait a minute, it wasn't me, it was him. Or hey, Paul looks at it and goes, I got a group of people, let me share my testimony. And he basically shares his conversion experience as he's walking down the road to Damascus. And as he goes through this, he begins to share everything of how I once was this, I was a guy that punished and tormented people, I looked to persecute Christians and punish them. And then he said, but then God changed my life. And in that verse, here's what he says. In verses 14 and 15, he talks about when Ananias came to see him. I'll read in verse 12. It says, a man named Ananias came to see me. He was a devout observer of the law and highly respected by all the Jews living there. He stood beside me and said, brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very moment, I was able to see him. And then he says in verse 14, the God of our fathers has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear words from his mouth. You will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. So I think there's three things we can get out of verse 14 that we see, okay? The first is this. Ananias says to Saul, which will later become Paul, says, The God of our fathers has chosen you. You are a chosen one. Now, we all grew up, and we've all been on the playground in elementary school or somewhere, and there's always the ritual that comes out of someone saying, let's pick teams. And for some reason, they pick two people, however they get to be those two people, and say, let's pick teams. And what happens? They go down the line, I want you. The next person goes, I want you. And what's the nerve-wracking one as people start to get picked and you're still standing there? I'm going to be the last one, aren't I? Yeah. Well, guess what? I'm going to give you hope today because God says you are chosen. Just as he told Saul, as Ananias told Saul, 
I'm telling you now, God has chosen you. Brian has preached over and over that as God hung on the cross, he thought of you. And he didn't pick us in order to go, well, you were number one and you were number two. Because thank the Lord, because I'd be way down the bottom of the list somewhere. But I have the promise to know that we are part of the chosen. God has chosen us. He had picked you because he loves you. He wants you to be part of his team. And I'm going to keep coming back to that video that God, that it said, what if you were going to be transformed? What if God invited you to that? He has. You are chosen. You are one of his. So when someone tells you this year that you, what you, don't, what you say doesn't matter or whatever, know that God has chosen you. It's the number one thing. And then he says to know his will. It says that you are going to know his will. Okay? Now, when it says his will, I want you to focus on that second word. His. Right? Because what do we like to do? Yeah, we like to go, God, here's what I need you to do. I can remember being in youth a long time ago, and a guy at camp going, y'all need to quit acting like God is your genie in a bottle, that you can rub him and he'll come out and go, God, this is what I need for this next week. And we're really good at that when we're in high school and in college. I was really good at that at college. Now listen, God, I got this big test coming up, and here's what I need. And I know God was up there going, well, if you spend more time with me, I might listen to you. But I, we tried to tell him what our will is. And Ananias was encouraging Saul to go, you're going to know his will. That you're going to hear from him. That you're going to focus on him. And you're going to know his will. So the question then becomes, how do we know his will? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because the third thing, it says that you will hear his word. Now, if you hear his word, I would say you will also hear his voice. Now, the question becomes, how do you recognize his voice? Okay? Now, all of us that are parents know this because you've all been in a group somewhere with a bunch of other parents, and one of your kids will walk in and go, Mom, Dad, Mom, Dad. And there's 14 moms or dads in the room, but you know when they walk in, you hear their voice, you turn and go, What? Why? Because you begin to recognize your kid's voice. Just like if you're at a party somewhere and a kid, one of your kids falls down, and hurts himself and begins to do that scream or cry, most of the time moms will go, I'll be right back, that's my kid crying. And you're like, how do you know? Because you begin to recognize it. I use this all the time. My kids and the students here, when I was a youth minister, used to know this all the time. And I won't do it because it'll be loud through this microphone. But if I whistle, my kids will turn around and look at me. And I got to do it where I could do it at youth camp or anywhere, and everybody, one in our youth group, would turn and look for me to the point of, where, where is she? Where's Catherine Nickerson? She was in here earlier. Yeah, Catherine, one year at youth camp, went with us as a sponsor and told me one day, I'm not going to turn around when you whistle anymore. So every day I walked in the cafeteria, I got her every day. She'd turn and spin her around. In high school, when Joel Glover was in high school, they came walking out of Walmart, and I was going in the far entrance, and they were on the other side of the parking lot, and I whistled, and he just started going like this. And I just stood and waved and laughed. But we began to recognize it. Our kids, my kids, recognize that. Our youth were got conditioned because they recognize it, and they knew that I probably wanted their attention for some way. The only way we're going to know God's will and to hear his word is we have to focus and be able to know it. But by doing that, we have to spend time with him. We have to be able to recognize his voice because we're hearing it. So how do we spend time with him? Well, there's all kinds of solutions out there. And one of the things that I'm going to do for this year, so if I get bad about it, you can hold me to it, is in the first at home room right now today or January and February, sheets of paper. And it is a writing plan to write out scripture. For 31 days of January, there's a different verse that you can write out. Now, when we were in the interim a while back before Brian came, our interim pastor, Joe Laughlin, said that he used to always do that, write out Scripture. And there was a time that I spent just in my quiet time going through and writing out Scripture. And for some reason, it just came alive to me. And I thought it was great. And so what I want to challenge you is for the, for the next year, we'll put these in here. Every two months, put in new months. 
but to take time and to spend each day just to write down. January 1st was Revelation 21.5. Today is Isaiah 65.17. And all you really need is to go buy a composition book. You don't have to go buy a ni nice, neat, leather-bound journal at Mardell's or whatever. If you want to do that, that's fine. You can go get a dollar composition book at Walmart. And every day, just take time to write that scripture down. Now, when we get to the challenge in a minute, I'm going to tell you another way that you can spend time with him that Brian laid out for us last week. But the question will be is, are you going to spend time with him? And one of the things that we struggle with is there's so many different things to do for devotionals. What are we going to do? And that's just another tool. If you don't want to use that, that's fine. But that's one of the things that I think is easy to do to sit down and write Scripture out and then begin to look at it. Then at verse 15, he says, you will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. So you will be his witness. So my question is, what is a witness? Now, most of the time when we hear witness, we think of someone that has seen something. We go immediately to court or trial and think, I'm going to bring in a witness. So if I was in a car wreck or something like that, and Johnny was in the car with me, I could go, Johnny is my witness because he knows it wasn't my fault. It was the other bad driver in Corpus. And I would tell Johnny to come up and tell his side of the story. But also we have witnesses that are experts that study. They may not have seen anything, but they spend time studying a certain profession and then they're brought in to make your case or whatever like that. So the question that I have is what type of witness are you? Because you may not necessarily always see it, but are you spending time to live it out? Now, I have a perfect example. I've been listening to a podcast, and I won't mention the name of the podcast. But on this podcast, they were talking about something. So I want to show you a picture of this guy. This is Lori Pakala. I probably butchered that. He visited the U.S. from Finland in 1907. And while he was here, he went to attend a U.S. baseball game. And while he was sitting there, he thought over and over, how do people sit here for two hours and watch this? Because it was kind of boring, and we've all been at a baseball game sometime where it's been one to nothing, and you're thinking, this is, I wasted my time. Okay? So he goes back to Finland. Now show this next picture, because I want you to think about being a witness. Now we all recognize this is a baseball field, right? A U.S. baseball field. We got home plate. We got the pitching mound. First, second, third base, left, right field. Okay? So Lori goes back to Finland after traveling back over time and begins to tell people about this baseball game, which then they come up with Finland baseball. And it's called P Pespalo. And this is what their field looks like. This is what he came up with. I wish y'all had Johnny's face right now because I knew this was going to go so well. I'm going to read you some of the rules because this is, I, you just need a YouTube how to play this game because it is the most confusing thing in the world. So you're going to see first base over here, then second base way over there, and third base, and then home. And you see the hitter, the pitcher standing right next to him. So the pitcher stands next to the batter. So if the batter was here, the pitcher stands next to him, whichever way they bat. They must throw a pitch one meter above their head. They stand right next to the batter and throw it up. You get three strikes, just like baseball. You get two if they don't, if you throw it up, there's a little round plate. If the pitcher, if the batter doesn't swing and it hits the plate, it's a strike. Or if you swing like baseball, if it doesn't hit it twice, that's a walk. Now, if you hit the ball on your first pitch, you don't have to run if you don't want to. You can take all three pitches to hit it and stay at home and then on your third pitch run. But the runners on the base can advance. I'm telling you all, this is the most confusing thing in the world. Okay? Now, if you hit it outside of the lines, just like in regular baseball, it's a foul ball. Now, at the very back, you'll see the left fielder. There's a line back there. If you hit it over that line in the air, most people think it's a home run. No, that's a foul ball if it flies that last line in the air. How do you get a home run? You only have to get to third base on one hit. So if I hit it on the ground and it rolls all the way out there and I get to third base, it's not a triple. It's a home run. I get a run. Better yet, 
I can stay on third base, and when the next guy hits it, I can run in and get another run. I'm telling y'all, this is so confusing, okay? And there aren't bases. They're like little boundary things. So if you go and watch the YouTube video, if you find one, you'll see a guy just run, and he'll just has to cross the line at home before the guy catches the ball, and it's a run. But this guy went back and saw American baseball, and this is what came up with. I'm telling you, it's confusing. But as I heard this example, I began to think about, what do I represent? What are the stories that I tell, and what type of faith are people getting from the things that I tell, share sometimes? Do they come up with a version of something else? Do they watch my life live out, and are they confused? So last week, several weeks ago, Brian came to me and said, I'm going to be out. Will you preach for me? I said, yeah. I started really thinking about this. I'd heard this story. I began to think, how can I use this? I found this very intriguing. I'm sitting right over there where Claude and Terry are sitting as Brian got up to preach. I would had my scripture laid out and everything. Hadn't talked to Brian about it. Brian's great. Not going, tell me what you're going to preach. Let's go over the points. And Brian got up and started to read his scripture, and I went, he's reading my text that I'm going to preach on next week. I flashed back to Stephen F. Austin in my advanced public speaking class, Dr. Jim Towns, to tell you how long he taught at Stephen F. Austin. Joe McComb had him as a student at Stephen F. Austin, and so did I. There's a little age difference between us. I won't go into that. But he taught at advanced public speaking class. I threw my keys out because Jim Towns, I'll never forget, taught us because I have a bad habit of putting my hands in my pocket. Take everything out of your pockets when you speak in front of people because you'll play with it. And he goes, it drives me up the wall when people have coins or keys and they're playing with it. And all you hear is the jingling of the keys. So just know every time I get up here, if I put my hands, there's nothing in my pockets. Yeah. But I got in that class in a, a persuasive speech time. And I was a smart college student. Jim Towns loved Dr. Pepper. So I had a great persuasive speech of why Dr. Pepper was better than Coke. And by golly, if two students in front of me, a student got up and had a similar speech about Dr. Pepper. I looked at Jim Towns and I said, I'm not going today. He said, why? I go, because I just gave my persuasive speech. He said, I want you to go anyway. So I did. So I thought about that last week as I sat there and I thought, I told Brian, you preach my sermon. And then I began to think and go, God, I understand what you're doing. So in Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17, this is what it says. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Okay, listen. And whatever you do, Whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So my question is, what is God calling us to do? And as I sat last week right over there, I thought, this is great. Brian's giving me the challenge. And so if you weren't here last week, here's our challenge. Point one, Brian asked us, to read Colossians 3, verses 12 through 17, every day until Easter. All right? So, if you missed last week, I got two things that you can spend time in the Word. You can spend time and pick up a writing tool and write a scripture a day, and then every day, read Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. Okay? Until Easter. And you may think, Why? Well, not to let the cat out of the bag, because he said it last week. Brian's going to preach over this verse for the next month or so. It won't be quite as long as the book of John on Wednesday nights, I don't think. But 
I gave him a hard time about that. But this is what his text is going to be leading over the next several months. Okay? Okay, point two of the challenge is pick one of those virtues that's listed in Colossians 3, 12 through 17 and work on it and pick one for each week and say, I'm going to work on this. Gentleness. I'm going to work on self-control. I'm going to work on love. Whatever that is. So each week you pick one of those virtues and say, I'm going to work this week to be better about it. Now I know over the time you're going to cycle through all those. Come back and start over again. Okay? The next one is, Brian says, if you're willing to commit to this, he wants you to email him and say, I'm willing to commit to read this and to work on this. So there's Brian's email address. I told him, I said, I'm just going to get up and tell him to email you. I don't remember what they're supposed to email you, but just email you. But he wants you to, if you're willing to commit to this, to email him. And then the last one is that as God begins to reveal himself to you, Brian wants you to share those stories with him through email. Now, you know, the dangerous thing is when we get up to preach sometimes, everybody's like, I'm going to be a sermon illustration. I think our kids, every time we get up to preach, are like, what are you going to say about us this time, Dad? I said, I don't know. i got a lot of stories to go through, so hang on. But... Brian says, and we talk as a staff, I'll be very honest, how do we celebrate those wins? When God begins to move in our church, there's things that happen that we don't always hear about till later. But Brian says, I want to celebrate those. As God begins to reveal himself to you, God wants, Brian wants to hear what God's doing in your life, in the life of our church, of what's going on. And not so he'll come up here, and I don't want you to think that if I share that with him, he's going to get up every each week and go, I have a list of all the emails I got. Here's what God's doing. Well, Lord Tosto told me. No, that's not what he's going to do. We want to begin to hear those stories of what God's doing. How God's walking beside you. God's giving you opportunities to share his faith, your faith with him, others, to reveal who he is. So if you're willing to do that, then I encourage you to email him. To sit down every day and open up Colossians chapter 3 and read through that. Pick up a writing plan. Write down some scripture. In fact, I'd even go a step further and tell you, hey, along if you do this with a writing plan, every day write out Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 through 17. Because for me, writing it over and over again, it becomes repetitive and it becomes ingrained in here. And a great way to memorize scripture. So really, it's a new year. And as I said, what's going to be different? We can put all this out here. Brian can come up with this, and as a staff, we can come up. But it's you that has to decide what's next. And so really my challenge for you is, what are you going to do with the new year? How are you going to grow closer to him and be more like him every day? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Lord, I thank you that you give us an opportunity to show others who you are each and every day. Lord, I am a big believer that the people that we interact with and that we bump into day to day are not by coincidence. So, Lord, I ask that that as this year starts off, Lord, you give us the drive to spend time with you, to show others who you are. Lord, to spend time with you so we can recognize your voice, that as you call us to do things, we can hear from you daily. Lord, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Lord, just open our eyes and our ears to you today. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. As Johnny and the team lead us, and we have a time of invitation, Lord, this is for you. Stephen and I will be down here. If you would like prayer, if you're looking for a church to join, I think First Baptist is the greatest place. If you're looking for an opportunity, you don't know more, you want to know more about who he is, you've never made that decision, Stephen and I would love to pray with you. But respond to him as he speaks to you, as Johnny and them lead us. Let's stand and sing. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back, oh, none go with me, I still
church family. It is so good to see you today. Glad you're here today. And I want to say a special thanks to Chris. Thank you, Chris, for uh, preaching in my absence. But the reason for the video today is we need to celebrate a milestone. Yesterday was Chris's 11th year. He marked his 11th year with us here on staff. And so one of the privileges, of you, as you've heard me say in the past, is uh, as pastors to be able to walk alongside our staff and to recognize milestones along the way. And so Chris, I just wanted you to know, and Mindy and family, I want you to know that you are appreciated, that we are glad that you are here. And uh, we want to uh, acknowledge this accomplishment and also tell you that uh, we look forward to many more, many more years together. So congratulations and thank you for all that you do. I told him that video was supposed to be secret, and I found out this morning about it. But I told him, 11 years, it's hard to believe, but I've had three different jobs. So I think it's either, it's either that or they just keep deciding we got to find something else for him to do instead of getting rid of him. So I feel honored. Oh, I was looking at pictures the other day that popped up on Facebook from 11 years ago when we came. and It's hard to believe how our kids, Jackson was in third grade when we came, and now he's a college freshman. It's just unbelievable. So... I say thank you to you for putting up with me for 11 years. So uh, it's truly an honor and joy. And I, I always say this, and I'm probably supposed to say this, at First Baptist, I believe, is the greatest church in Corpus. But it's because of you people um, that make it a joy. And I think our whole staff would say that, to serve alongside you for what you do. And so thank you um, for my family, but also just from our staff for, for being great. And so uh, thank you for that. Uh, just a reminder... Uh, that we do start this Wednesday night our activities and discipleship classes. If you see that schedule on the back of the bulletin, uh, the classes that are being offered of I'm teaching a class, there's a women's study, uh, Stephen's teaching a class, Brian's doing his Bible study, uh, the worship team will be practicing on Wednesday nights, uh, there's activities for our children and students, and so uh, really I say that on the video, but we have something for the whole family. So I hope that you will join us on Wednesday nights and check out that schedule uh, and then we do start Upward Basketball this Saturday. And so if you'd like to help with refereeing games or helping in the snack bar, I'll be over at a table to come by. But as we start this new year, let it continue to be reminded of how do you represent God and what kind of witness and testimony do you give daily? Johnny, lead us as we sing and go. Let's stand together as we sing. 